Come on in, Terry. It's time. It's time. There was frost on the windshield of my truck this morning, but I can't wait any longer. <laughs> it's time to get the cool cars out. When I went up to get this thing out of storage, I was reminded of all the stuff we didn't do last year before we put it away. Yeah, it does need a little bit of stuff. And it's still got all that stuff from the great race last year that we just kind of left. Yep. So I guess we got some stuff to do before we can take it out. And of course, it's almost time to go in the great race again. So we're going to have to get it. Gotta get it prepped out. and ready. First of all, we have got to put this hood back down where it belongs. Yeah, they shimmed up the hood because they needed to get heat out of the engine bay because they, they felt like it was overheating on the great race. I'm not sure it was, but we'll put the hood back down. They put that power steering cooler on the fuel line because they, they said it was vapor locking. So we'll sort that out and figure out what was actually going on there. We really should do something with that air cleaner. That's a uh, refugee from the 396. <laughs> it doesn't quite match. Yeah. yeah. And we got to take a look at the gauges, make sure they're working right. They put an electric fan on there that I'm not sure it actually needs. I think we can get rid of that. I did discover that part of the huge running issue with this was a bad PCV valve, which was creating a huge air leak right, that's in right. this. So we were running quite lean and that was probably part of the overheating issue. Well, that would be awesome because... Cheap know, fix. The big issue, of course, was a whole bunch of oil went away yeah. while the car was on the great race. <laughs> and a brand new engine. Um, and I know you and I were talking about this before. We were all concerned that maybe the rings never seated or something like that. Yeah. The PCV, that would be a wonderful solution because that's the simplest thing yeah. that it never is. Yeah. And then the vacuum leak would explain why this thing was idling so rough and the exhaust was always so rich and we, we had a hard time dialing in the carburetor. So I guess we can dive into that too. It's though. definitely rich now. They were trying to compensate for that vacuum leak with yeah. the carburetor. And now that I have it plugged, you can... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we got a laundry list to get into. We do. I think first, we should probably take that cooler off. This is not a GM air cleaner anyway. It's an yeah, aftermarket one. But it's got the sticker. <laughs> I'm going to get a 427 <laughs> sticker and I'm going to get the right air cleaner for it. I think this is the way. Oh, there it is. Oh, that wasn't even that tight. Oh, look at the oil. Oh, that, uh, that might be, ooh, ooh. Is that fuel? That's fuel. The plot uh, thickens. Mm, plug that. Accelerator pump here is. Is it leaking? No, but we have to adjust it. It's too tight. It's already into the pump shot? It's already into the pump shot, yeah. But part of that could be because trying to make up for the vacuum leak, we've probably got the um, throttle plate open too much, exposing the uh, transfer slots, which is also in turn probably pushing down on the accelerator pump a little too much. So this carburetor came with the engine, the Holley 4150, I think it's an 800. The vacuum secondary um, should be calibrated for the engine, but yeah, we had a bunch of issues trying to get it dialed in last year when we were getting the car ready to go. Yeah. Um, which now that you have found the vacuum leak from the PCV valve, uh, that might make things a lot better. That might explain why we're having so much trouble, but the carb settings are probably all out of whack. Yeah, yeah, they would be at this point in time. A lot of these rubber vacuum plugs yeah, they don't last are long. not of good quality. I've been finding many of these that have uh, cracks in them. Yeah. Another vacuum leak. It's amazing how fast those things deteriorate. They, don't, yeah. they last maybe a year, maybe. 
had much better luck using the vinyl multicolored ones. I actually grabbed this gauge from one of our displays and refurbished it. I've been kind of dying to use it. <laughs> Ready? Yep. So now I'm going to set our accelerator pump. And what you want to do is just barely be touching under pressure. It's kind of hard to show. But right about there is where it should be. And you can see it's a little over. So when I let it down, we're actually getting a little squirt a little bit too early. So I'm just going to try and tighten this up just a wee bit. Now that we've tuned up the car, we're going to go through, check all the brakes and everything, make sure everything's good for the great race. While these calipers look questionable, the POR15 caliper painting kit works well. So I'm going to walk you through the process of POR15's caliper paint. And I have pre-mixed some of the degreaser at a 4 to 1. And I have plugged the holes here for our soft lines. We'll just give this a scrub, give it a nice little rinse. Get all that off. All right, so I just blew these off the shop here, got them dry. Next step is the metal prep. I have some just kicking around here in the shop, so we're going to spray this down, and this helps promote adhesion of the next step. We've had our metal prep, which is step three on here for 20 minutes. Now we're gonna rinse it off thoroughly dry it and then step four we're going to apply our rust preventative and let it dry. So as you can see our caliper is a marked improvement over what we started with this morning. It definitely pays to do the second coat. As you can see it filled in nicely, came out nice and shiny and you'll have a caliper that looks good for many many years. The electric fan. You and I are not really fans of that fan uh, because we both think it doesn't really need to be on this car. This car doesn't really get hot. Now I know we haven't sat in traffic on a 95 degree day, but these guys reported 205 maybe the highest yeah, they saw. Yeah, that's what that's I heard. For a big block with an automatic in the summertime, that's not bad. Now that radiator, I told you, it's a US radiator that we had made. Yeah. It's a stock configuration for a big block Chevelle. I believe it's a four row using their high efficiency core. A US radiator makes a triple pass radiator that looks stock, but it has dams in the tanks so that the coolant you know, fills one tank to a point then it has to flow across, drops down, comes back again, drops down again and goes back over to the outlet. Actually forces it through all the rows yeah. instead of mm -hmm. just one massive. So all the coolant yeah. is going through there three times, um, getting more exposure to air. 
if we do that, we have to put an external trans cooler on it. And that was part of the reason why trying to get the car together, we thought, let's just put a conventional one in it. And it seems to work great. But the triple pass, it's good to know that that option is available because <laughs> um, there are much hairier big blocks out there that might need that. This radiator seems to work really well. It was just sitting at 190 degrees right here, idling, no issues. Uh, regardless, if we do have to use an electric fan, we need to wire it and set it up a little bit better than it is now. I personally think we should just take it off and go for a test drive. Yeah, this was a roadside repair, so we can pull it off, we'll put it on the side, see what the car does. If we need to make uh, some auxiliary upgrades, we can. All right, so we spent the day in the shop with the Chevelle straightening out a lot of the stuff that was done last year when it went on the great race, doing some tuning. It feels like it's running better. It's definitely idling better. It's idling smoother. The temp is really cool right now, but it's a cool day, so that's not really a good test. We're going to have to wait for some hotter days, which we've already had a few. Spend some time in traffic, letting it idle and stuff like that. I think it's going to be all right. I mean, right now it's running at like 160. Um, right now, I'm just going to drive it around a little, see how the carburetor feels, see how the idle is, just in stop and go traffic. Power has always been good on this motor. Um, we haven't run it down the track yet, and we probably will at some point, but it's certainly not lacking for power. And it's still a fun car to drive, and it's a lot, uh, a lot livelier than it was when the stock 396 was in it. So it was a good day. I think we'll be back in the shop with the Chevelle doing a follow-up on the work we've done here. And we've only got a few weeks until the car's got to be ready to go out reliably on the great race. So we've definitely got some more shakedown stuff to do. So I'm going to enjoy this thing for an afternoon and uh, we'll see you in the next one. As you watch this, our new updated Chevelle is going to be on the great race. This year it's from St. Augustine, Florida to Colorado Springs, Colorado and you can check it out. Visit greatrace.com. If you enjoy, please like, share, subscribe and comment below. And remember, if you're not first, you're last. Thank you for watching. I threw kind of a wrench into the program when I thought, you know, we should put overdrive in this thing too. And it's a big block, so I want to use the 4L80 style trans. We got a 4L85 Supermatic from Chevrolet Performance 2, which is a great trans, but it's really a truck trans. And um, it proved to be a tight fit in the tunnel, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. yeah, so that was the big challenge of the swap. Without cutting the tunnel, we, yeah, we were even beating it up. We didn't even really want to dent it up too much if we could help it. Yeah, I mean, we're both, I don't know, we're both Chevy guys, and we both like this car. And I went online and looked to see what other people are doing because I know they're using this transmission in almost every other story. Oh, step one, cut the trans tunnel out. Yeah. Ouch. No. Or a dead blow hammer. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know what made me think that we could fit it. <laughs> you like a challenge. Uh, <laughs> cut to the chase, we did get it in obviously and it does work, yeah. but it took some doing.